What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB here tonight with the review for the haves and the have nots. This is season eight, episode number 11. Not a booger. As you guys can see my nose, you can, can see it. Episode, season eight, episode 11, the episode was titled Wolves. <clears throat> that was the name of the episode, right? I'll double check it before I upload the video. But you guys, before we get into the video, if you guys are watching this video, any other video on the channel, and you're not subscribed to the channel, what are we doing? Why are we still going out on a date? Why am I having to pay for every, you know my meal when we are going on a date and you've invited me? Hit the subscribe button, you guys. <clears throat> Hit the notification bell button and you know leave a comment. So with that all being said, let's go, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review, shall we? All right, you guys, so the episode, it picks up where we left off last week with the slap fight between Hannah and Veronica. So the fight to me was really funny. It was stupid to be quite honest with you because nobody has any bruises, nobody has you know any bloody blood coming from them. No black eye, no nothing. They look the same. So Veronica is just, in di she's completely dismayed that Hannah actually hit her. But I mean, you slapped her, Veronica. What did you think she was going to do? Just sit there and let you slap her? So Veronica's like, you hit me. She says, yeah, nine times, bitch. I was like, oh, okay, Hannah. I see you, girl. Can't hate on you. So Veronica is basically telling Hannah, like, you hit the wrong person. She's like, okay, if I did, whatever. But what I do know is you need to get your ass up and get out. And then Hannah went one step further, and I was like, oh, Hannah, I fucks with you. When she called Don and called on Hannah, on Veronica's $54 million loan, I was like, oh, Hannah, hit her word hurts. Hit her word hurts. So then we see, you know, Veronica and Hannah, they eventually walk out. She was like, nobody's ever hit me. Well, she did. I think that's what has Veronica shell shocked is the fact that Hannah fought her back. So the cops pull up and also David and um, Jim pull up at the same time. So they ask, what's going on here? And she's like, she's trespassing. And she's leaving, but she was trespassing. So then Jim asks, Hannah, not Hannah, but Veronica, why was she there? She says, I'm here to see you. He says, he repeated it like, I don't know how many times. Why are you here? She says, I'm here to see you. Um, Cause he asked her what she was looking for. Like I said, it was a never ending back. It was almost a never ending back and forth. But eventually Veronica says, I'll be back later tonight. Um, We're gonna pause here and move forward. All right, you guys, actually, you know what I think I'm gonna do? Because honestly, when it comes to this scene with Benny, Candace, and Rihanna, it was the longest scene for nothing. Now, the first two times that we, no, the first time we saw, you know, Benny, Candace, and um, Rihanna, Rihanna, whatever her name is, they were coming out of the house. They had just looked at the house that Benny wants to buy. Benny asked Candace what she thought about the house, and Candace said, I like the house. So, you know, Rihanna, Brianna, whatever her name is, she was like, so, you know, she assumed that Candace was his wife. He says, no, this is my sister. So she says, so she says to him, are you married? He says, no. Do you have kids? He says, not yet. She says, well, this is an awfully big house for a single man. He's like, well, I hope to, you know, move my mom. And she's like, oh, that's so nice. So, like I said, Candace, Benny asked Candace, did she like it? She said, yes. So Benny says that, you know what, I'm gonna go back and take another look at it. So he does that. So Candace is calling and check on her flight, but Candace, you know, finds out she's on the no-fly list. So once she finds out she's on the no-fly list, she calls up um, Landon. Landon, you know, she's like, tell that son of a bitch to get me off the no-fly list. And Landon says, well, let me see what I can do. She's like, tell him to get me off the no-fly list or I will talk to the press. You know, like so many people are calling me and this was a back and forth scene as well. Could have done without it. Cause he says it'll take him about four days, but then he asked her to help, you know, to get an you know, about an interview. I was just like, okay, whatever. So 
Benny, he's gonna buy the house, right? So Candace brokers a deal. She wants to get the house at 175,000, I believe is what it was, with a 15 day close and some other, and whatever else. So she tells Benny, because Rihanna's like, I have to go talk to the you know developer. So she goes and talks to the developer. So Benny and um, Candace are talking. He asks her once again, does she like the house? She says, yes, I already told you that. So then he, she tells him that she's on a no-fly list, and she asks him, can he st she stay with him? He says, absolutely, you can stay with me. You can stay with me for, forever if you want to. She was like, yeah, no, not going to happen. And then to end with them, Benny asked, so R Rihanna, Brianna, she came back and said that, you know, the developer said, 195000 and they'll close just, you know, so long as the check, you know, is certified, I guess. I don't know. So Benny asked her out on a date. She says she doesn't mix business with pleasure. Benny does not know how to talk to people in general because he could have said something. I mean, he's an asshole, but he could have said a lot of different it took for Candace to actually just make that happen. How old is Benny? I know they're supposed to be playing in their 20s, but God. Let's move on. No, I didn't approve it. So Veronica says, well, tell her not to do it. And she says, um, you know, if you tell her not to call alone, I can help you get out of this situation that you're in. And Catherine's like, how in the hell can you help me out? She says, I'm a witness. She says, I know. For the prosecution she says i know she says i have an immunity deal so what i can do is i can get on that stand and say that i killed jennifer salson and you get off and they can't touch me because of what my immunity so all you have to do is don't call my loan and forgive it so Catherine says okay i won't call your loan but i'll just get you know put it down to 44 000, 44 um 44 million. And Veronica was like, 10 million. That's all your freedom is worth. She says, it's either all of it or no deal. Veronica, I mean, not Veronica, but Catherine says, no deal. <laughs> and then when Veronica got up to walk out, she says, uh, <coughs> oh yeah, Veronica, don't ever wear that wig again because it makes you look like a man. And she says, honey, I know you can't see, I know you don't have any mirrors in here, but you can't talk about anybody looking like a man. Why did Tyler write that into the script? A white woman telling a black woman she looks like a man. Okay. So then let's talk about the, um, <clears throat> so you guys remember in last week's episode, Kobe told Madison he had a client, right? Well, he went to go see that client, but this was a setup by Tanner and Veronica. Tanner is an undercover gay man. I don't give a damn what nobody says. So they lure Kobe into the house. And I was thinking to myself, like, Kobe doesn't realize that, realize that this is Veronica's house. Where did they park at? I mean, I know they got in her. Oh, they must have hopped to a fence to get in her pool. Because I was so confused by that. This was one scene that confused me. And there's another one we're going to talk about later in the episode. Re review that confused me. So, they, so actually, they started fighting with Kobe. But Kobe was beating Tanner's ass, his other guy's asses. They had to jump him in order to beat him. I'm like, damn, that's some punk shit right there. If you ain't, if if I ain't never saw some punk shit, so then they want him to apologize to Tanner and Veronica. I was so both of them. Fuck y'all. I wish he had a. I wish he would have had something just to spray their asses. Oh, I wish he had something to spray their asses. So then the guy that set him up, he tell he got a phone call about Justin, and he told Tanner about the phone, about Justin. So they leave. And Veronica's like, well, somebody needs to clean this up. Well, bitch, you're the reason. Ooh. Mm. Tanner's a bitch. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Jim. Jim the asshole. So Jim goes and talks to Dave, and he figured out exactly what Veronica wanted. And he figured they figured that it's either Don or John that told her. So Jim wants David to go and talk to Hannah. And David is like, she's not going to talk to me. And Jim's like, oh, yes, she will. Like I said, Jim is an asshole because he told David that he um, admires Hannah. 
you do not how do you admire hannah when you just you just i mean you keep calling her a bitch how do you admire that woman you call her a bitch but you admire her oh i can't stand jim i literally cannot stand jim mm. that man is a piece of shit period point blank that's pretty much it with that scene because I just wrapped that up because I didn't want to go into that long repetitive dialogue that they talked about. But Madison, Madison is at the hospital. So he's calling Colby, but there's no answer because we know what happened to Colby. Colby got his ass jumped. And then Tanner shows up being a complete dick. So he's asking Madison, does he work there? He's Justin's brother. And Madison's like, let me go get his doctor. Like I said, Tanner has been an asshole, but come on. I, he, uh, obviously he's behind the, the desk so yes he works there but he's not in the scrubs so if he's not in scrubs that would mean he's not what's on duty I want somebody to shoot whoever I, I feel like some people I feel like it's going to be some people that's going to die in this season two of them that I need to be on that list Veronica and Tanner and Jim three actually let's add three Veronica, Tanner, and Jim, they got to be on that list of people that die because I can't stand those three. God. Mm. So let's talk about David. So David went to go check on Hannah, and we got cussing Hannah in this episode. I mean, she's dropped a shit bomb, bullshit, shit, 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 shit. That's all she kept saying was shit, 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 shit. I'm like, damn, man, you're going to come up, you, you can, can you say something else? But she told David that she's okay. And, you know, she's talking about Veronica got a hood ass beating today. Yes, she, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. She got a hood slapping, but okay. So let's talk about Tanner again. You know, we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Yep, we can wrap it up. Tanner. So Tanner went to the police station. So Tanner found out what happened to Justin. That Justin went to, you know, the um, restaurant where Madison and Jeffrey were and set his own self on fire. Now, for some odd reason, Tanner believes that Justin, I mean, that Jeffrey them did it. But the man sat there and told you that your brother was on surveillance camera at the gas station dousing himself with gasoline. This was the other question for me in the episode the fuck so you mean to tell me that Justin went to that restaurant doused in gasoline and not one person said anything about the man smelling like gasoline I guess so then here's the other thing that that irritated me it didn't irritate me actually yes it did because it irritated me with Jeffrey because Jeffrey is stupid so we're at the morgue and you know um matt not that madison but um tanner and the racist mama they looking at jeffrey's justin's charred body <laughs> she tells jeffrey that she hates him and you know she blames him okay baby girl whatever so then the mother leaves and then tanner talks to jeffrey <clears throat> I don't know what world Jeffrey lives in, but that was the oddest conversation. The oddest. Like you didn't find anything weird about this conversation, but okay. Okay. Okay, I I'm confused. So let Tanner tell you he knew what Jeff or just Justin was doing in the back of his squad car. He knew that um, Justin liked Jeffrey, and then he told Jeff he told Justin to pursue Jeffrey. I'm like, huh? Because for the long for a few minutes, I sat there confused. I'm like, huh? Guy really sat there looking at my TV like, huh? I'm like, no, you didn't know any of this stuff. Then I figured it out. I'm like, oh shit, he's playing Jeffrey, and Jeffrey is too dumb to see it. Come on, Jeffrey. Justin was a nutcase. His mama is a rude racist. What do you think Tanner is? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. 
And then he says that, um, you know, Justin left something that he wants him to have. He just died, Jeffrey. Common sense would say, how did he, how, unless you knew he was going to kill himself. And Jeffrey gave the address. Okay. Oh, but he gave, but he's staying with David. And David does have that, that little security guard, that his little um, bodyguard there. So maybe nothing will happen to Jeffrey. I hope not. But yeah, and then he also told him that um, Justin had a HIV. He was HIV positive. I'm like, oh my God. Really? Okay, Jeffrey, whatever happens to you, honestly, at this point, you deserve it. I gotta be honest with you. Because you, you're just looking stupid at this point. But that's the episode, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video now. Until the next one, stay safe out there, you guys. Um, wash your hands wear your mask or not, whichever one you choose to do, guys, just be safe and be blessed. And I'll see you guys later.